Holy Spirit, Amen. grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. A very good morning to you all. As you see, I am not Father Philip. He came back from Cornwall last night um, and decided it would be much better if St. Paul's saw a little less of me. So he's doing Paul's and Modwin's this morning, which is very noble of him after his holiday. And he asked me if I'd like to come here. And I said, of course I would. It is good to be with you. We've got to the 20th Sunday after Trinity, and we'll hear a very familiar but very challenging story of Jesus in the Gospel reading, preceded by something really quite interesting uh, from the Old Testament about Cyrus, the king of Assyria. And together, they may challenge us to think of how we as Christians look out into the world and how we as Christians can best serve it. So let's ask God to be with us in our worship as we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We look around us and are horrified at the state of the world. And if we truly love God, we acknowledge our part in all its failings. We acknowledge our pride, our selfishness, our failure to love God with our whole heart, and our failure to love our neighbour as ourself. And so we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For the our Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
be with you. Let us pray. God, the giver of life, whose Holy Spirit wells up within your church, by the Spirit's gifts, equip us to live the gospel of Christ and make us eager to do your will, that we may share with the whole creation the joys of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We've got two readings in a row today. First reading, Old Testament, Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by name. I surname you, I surname you though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other besides me. There is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. And the New Testament reading uh, from the letter of Paul to Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us, and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and, to, and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned from, to God from idols to serve true, a true and living God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Now may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. That gospel reading was, I hope, very familiar. But there was a lot going on behind that simple exchange. And if we know a little about it, it may help us to understand it better and to grapple with the challenges it has for us today. The tax to be paid to Caesar, the tax in question, was a poll tax. Uh, we're round about, what, the year 32, something like that. It, the tax had been imposed by the Romans in AD 6. It was a tax of one denarius, just a few pence per person per year. You may remember, some of you, some of us who are old enough, that when Mrs. Thatcher tried to impose a poll tax on us, there was a lot of unrest. In Judea, it was even more violent. Back in AD 6, there was a revolt. It wasn't that it was a great financial burden, but patriotic Jews hated the tax, and there was this revolt. And the leader of that revolt was a Galilean named Judas. Not, of course, Judas Iscariot. Judas the Galilean. And then there was another matter. The Roman denarius was a silver coin with the emperor's head on it. Tiberius was the uh, emperor at the time. And if, like me, you've been watching the repeats of I, Claudius, you will know what that means. And the, the coin had an inscription, D.V. Filius, son of a god on it. Now, the second commandment forbade graven images, and to call Caesar son of God was blasphemous. So the coin itself was doubly offensive. No self-respecting Jew would have one on his person. The Romans actually allowed special lower-value copper coins without the emperor's head to circulate so that Jews could avoid handling the despised silver coins but still pay the tax. So the question put to Jesus was on the face of it quite innocent. Jesus, as a Galilean, was not required to pay the tax. Here was a rabbi who could give an unbiased opinion. But with the political and religious background, it was clearly designed, as Matthew makes clear, as a trap. Say yes, and the people of Jerusalem will despise you. Say no and the Pharisees will denounce you as a second Judas, another Galilean revolutionary. Jesus, of course, said neither yes nor no. He apparently, as one might expect, did not have a denarius on his person. So he asked for one, show me the coin. And the Pharisees had one, and they were in the temple precincts. Clearly their practice did not match their thoughts of purity. Whose head is this, and whose title? Caesar's, they said. Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. Well, how did the Pharisees feel after that? 
smutty, defeated, outwitted, I suspect. They used the coin, they should pay the tax. And Matthew says they were amazed and went away. Now, we have to remember that in Jerusalem, in Jesus' time, there was an occupying power. It was natural that there should be an essential incompatibility between loyalty to God and loyalty to Rome. That is what Judas the Galilean had thought. To pay the tax would have been to accept an earthly sovereign in place of God. And Jesus points out that it is perfectly possible, though not always easy, to be a loyal subject of God and to be a dutiful citizen of the state. St. Paul, in the letter to the Romans, agrees, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. St. Peter agrees in his first letter, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority. Fear God, honor the king. And before Pilate himself, Jesus acknowledged Pilate's authority, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. We may find all this unsurprising. We have lived with relatively good governments for many years. And our coronation service this year acted out the idea of all authority coming to rulers from God. But to the Jews of Jesus' day, it was quite shocking. The problem was perhaps not so much that they saw themselves as God's own people, but that God was their own God and that the Romans didn't recognize him. For us, it's not always so easy. We recognize, we know that we need some form of government. Anarchy is no good for anyone. But what happens when the governing authority ignores or seems to oppose the will of God? Loyalty to God may mean that believers can no longer accept the rule of a government. It may be a fine judgment as to when the line is crossed. It has, I think, to be a matter of individual conscience. Democracies, at least, provide the opportunity to get rid of a government, and for lesser reasons than opposing the will of God. Two recent by-elections, one very near to home, suggest that the next general election may bring about big changes. Jesus taught that God provides government for the benefit of his people. If he could think that in the reign of Tiberius Caesar, he is certainly calling us to be tolerant and patient. Now, the story of Cyrus from Isaiah chapter 5, 45, may be helpful. Cyrus was king of Assyria, king of Persia, and he was a pagan. He never recognized God. But God took him and used him and even called him his anointed, though, as he said to Cyrus, you do not know me. It was through King Cyrus of Persia that the Israelites were allowed to go home from their captivity in Babylon. God is God. I am the Lord, he says. There is no other. God can take and rule and use whomsoever he wants. So a pagan may find himself doing God's will without even knowing it. A government may be acting for God if it is acting for the, for the good of God's people even if that government does not acknowledge God. We cannot simply reject the authority of a government because it is not wholly Christian. As an interesting historical aside, England once, after the execution of Charles I, who was, if not a good king, at least a Christian king, had a parliament made up entirely of men appointed because they were dedicated Protestant Puritanical Christians. Parliament was a complete disaster. It didn't work. The Christians argued among themselves and got absolutely nothing done, and Oliver Cromwell had to take over. As an aside, our church, the Church of England, is in part at least democratic. We elect a general synod, which oddly enough is modeled on our British Parliament. 
what do we do as Christians when that elected body of our church may be seen to go against the will of God? When it seems to some that this synod is following the spirit of the age rather than the spirit of God. To discern the will of God may be difficult. But what if the synod seems to be going against the word of God as presented in Holy Scripture? Now, at the moment, many people, perhaps a large minority, think that is the situation. You will have heard that there have been protests in many of our churches. And we may find, just as the next general election may be exciting, the next meeting of the General Synod may be fraught. And what if a people's leaders decide on a massacre of the innocents? Hamas was a democratically chosen government, but once in power, they have had no more elections. How do we, outside that dreadful situation, distinguish between the suffering people of Gaza and their murderous leadership? Surely, respect for the ways of God calls there for regime change. I'm not sure that there are, if there ever were, such things as Christian countries or governments. There are rather countries with Christian people and governments with Christian members. Each of us is a Christian because we believe and trust in the God revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. We have been baptized into Christ and Jesus has shown us that God is love and that he calls us, his followers, to be loving. He sends his Holy Spirit, empowering them to love. It is gradually, one by one, that the kingdom that really matters, the kingdom of God, comes and grows. And from that kingdom, God sends us out, each and every one of us, and strengthens us to make a difference in the world. Simple acts of love and kindness and a humility that gives God the glory are the way forward. And such small steps build into a wave or a mountain that will change the world. Where forgiveness and love are put before hatred and revenge, the kingdom of God advances. And God calls us to help in that progress. So, whatever emperor or king or government we find ourselves under, we must give thanks for the peace that we here enjoy and work in God's strength for his kingdom of justice, love and peace. And we pray that God will open our eyes to the signs of the coming of his kingdom wherever around us they may be and give thanks for all those whom God chooses to bring them about. Amen. Now we stand and affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us pray. Let us first pray for the church throughout the world. Lord, we thank you for your church, broken and divided. Her witness is marred by our dissents, our factions and our arguments. Lord, unite us in your truth. Show us how to let your love shine out from us. Help us to be loving to each other and help us all to know your presence within us and to work for the coming of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And so we pray for Bishop Michael and Bishop Matthew. We pray for Archdeacon Megan and we pray especially for Simon as he prepares to move to Burton to be the priest in charge of this parish and of the parish of St. Paul. Bless everything that is being done to welcome him. Fill him with your Holy Spirit and help him to proclaim your kingdom and to take all the opportunities you provide to grow that kingdom in this place. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And we pray for your world, torn apart by war, war due to hatred and prejudice and the love of power, war caused by economic inequality. Lord, we pray that you will turn the hearts of all those who lead their peoples to war, whether in Russia or the Ukraine or in Gaza, or in Jerusalem. We pray you will turn the hearts of the leaders, but we pray especially for the innocent victims of war who have no say, whose cry for peace goes unheard. And we pray for all those who have been killed or injured or maimed by rocket attacks on hospitals. And we give thanks for those to pre 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 prepared to work in such conditions for the love of their fellow humans. We pray for Gaza. We pray for Jerusalem. We pray for Israel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick in mind, body, or a state. We pray for all those troubled with anxieties and we pray for those who work for the relief of mental illness. We pray for our counsellors, our community psychiatric nurses, our psychiatrists and psychologists. Lord, bless the work they do and grant to all your people health of mind and body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this congregation, we pray for Phil Farron, Betty Bourne, Cess Taylor, June Brown, Amy Wright, Patricia, Ellie Parton, John, Tracy, Lynn Connell, Gordon Adams, Gosha Taylor, Terry and Daz Walker, Jill Stride, Carol and John Grant, and Claire Wagstaff. Lord, bless all those for whom we pray. Increase their faith, give them hope, and give them relief in their suffering and your perfect healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones. We remember the families of Peter Booth, Linda Fiddler, Peter Hayes, Lynn Connell, 
Eileen Maple and Stanley Monkhouse. May the faithful departed rest in peace and rise in glory. And in the year's mind, we remember Percy Mills, priest, George Rowe, Harry Newman, Lottie Tomlinson, and Francis Acton. May light perpetual shine upon them. May they know that perfect peace, which is our hope here on earth. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By the one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us therefore receive all that is made to say. The peace of the Lord be all with you. And the Lord with you. Let us offer one another the sign of God's name.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image, and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law, and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice and peace. And as we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of angels in heaven, evermore praising you and singing, God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave himself up for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ 
and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Divine, St. Paul the Apostle, St. Aidan, St. Chad, and all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour himself has taught us, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ.
God, our Father, whose Son, the light unfailing, has come from heaven to deliver the world from the darkness of ignorance. Let these holy mysteries open the eyes of our understanding, that we may know the way of life and walk in it without stumbling, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you, our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I don't have terribly many notices to give you. I'd like to remind you that there will be a Mass on Thursday the 2nd of November for all souls, at which there will be commemoration of the faithful departed 
Um, I've been preparing that, and I think you are preparing an up-to-date list of those to be remembered. Do come along to that. Part of the advantage of doing that is it frees up the Sunday, uh, November the 5th, to be a really glorious celebration of all saints, rather than trying to do the two things together. So two things to look forward to in the coming weeks. And then, of course, November the 8th, a new start. Uh, please make sure you're as many as possible here to welcome Father Simon as he comes to be our priest. Let me tell you that we have a very amiable committee planning it all, and things are making progress. I think we're nearly there. Margaret? What? <laughs> Yeah, no, I can see him. So I wanted to point it to Only a couple of things. Just to, just to remind everybody of Peter Booth's funeral tomorrow. I'm sure he wants a good send off, don't we? Father Philip will be here for that. Yes. And the Red Lion House Charity Coffee Morning on Saturday morning. Okay? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Say that again so Thanks. I can hear it. Red Lion House Coffee Morning on Saturday. Charity Coffee in the Morning. Thank you very yes, much. It's £5 a ticket. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you very much for that. Good. Never misses a chance for that one. It's been lovely being with you, even if I wasn't quite what you were expecting this morning. Let's go out into the world and be challenged to look at it through Jesus' eyes. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. We still have a hymn to sing. I'll get used to your order of doing things just in time not to come again. Right, final hymn. Christ from Yes, okay.
assembly, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.